First Steps in Amateur Radio Emergency Communication. This was the first in our new series that we're running on Rat Pack. And not only do we want to talk about these, but we want to talk about some other things that you need to do along with each of these steps. So this is available at tiny.cc slash fs dash ar dash em, where you can shoot the QR code. This will also be available in the download materials on the Dropbox. So what we want to talk about are some of the next steps once you get your license and once you start operating your radio to get started in amateur radio emergency communications prep. Think of your FCC license as just the first piece in a big puzzle of amateur radio. The other key pieces include finding mentors, getting more training both in emergency communication and general amateur radio, getting on the air experiences, and joining local MCOM groups. Think of your FCC license as a learner's permit to learn a lot more. One of the things I suggest is you find a mentor. A mentor is someone who can help you answer questions and avoid some of the pitfalls of the hobby. This is sometimes referred to as an Elmer. Mentors can answer questions about what rig to buy, loan you an antenna analyzer, help you when you're having trouble understanding a particular concept. If you haven't already, I suggest you find a mentor or mentors. Where do you find a mentor? The first place might be the place that you got your license. If there was a local club you took a licensing class with, that might be a good place to start looking. Lots of old timers are more than happy to help newcomers and many clubs have former men formal mentoring programs. To find a club in your area, there's two links, one from the AWRL, one from QRZ.com. And I strongly suggest finding a local club. Nowadays, you might find your mentor online. There's lots of websites and mailing lists that are geared towards helping other people become better amateur radio operators. And Rad Pack is one great example of that. One common fallacy is that you can only have one mentor. In fact, many hams have multiple mentors. When I have antenna questions, I go to, I go to Steve. When I have technical radio questions, I go to Frank. When I have questions about different modes, I go to specific people. The next thing you need to do is think about taking OXCOM training. And the, the MCOM training is available from a number of sources, but the one I would start with is the ECD OXCOM. That's the official government training through FEMA, has all the courses you're going to need and information on them. Click on that link for more information. But I also have information on AWRL, OXCOM training, and ARIES, MCOM training.org, um, CERT basic training. And disaster skills, OXCOM training, the wave talkers who focus on WinLink, communication unit training resources, and of course the Rat Pack Thursdays are a great place for information on MCOM. But to use the radio, you really need practice, practice, and more practice. Just like proficiency in any field, practice makes perfect. Amateur radio get on the air practice opportunities can be found in a number of different activities and it's very important that you get on there as often as possible and have these experiences so you're comfortable with your radio and you're used to operating so i put together a list here uh, and what i'm actually going to do is pop out to this list in a second but nets are a great way to get to stay active each week AWRL field day coming up in june Amateur radio contests, not for the competitive aspect. If you think contesting is a dirty word, I want you to forget that and think of contests as simply the bands are full of a lot of people that want to talk to you. So it's great practice. Don't worry about sending in an entry in the contest. All you need to do is make sure you can give them the exchange they're expecting from you and they'll be happy to take your contact. And it's a great, you don't even have to record their exchange if you don't care. Special event stations, POTA, Parks on the Air, SOTA, great opportunities to set up your equipment in portable operations, fox hunting, direction finding, and emergency communication exercises. I put together a link right here, and there's also a QR code you can shoot. This tiny.cc link is a document. This will also be in the Dropbox, and it has how you can find nets around the country, has information on field day coming up the third weekend in June, has contest information and it has a slideshow to introduction to contesting and a video recording that I did. Also, if you're an AWRL member, you can take the five module class in the learning network called Introduction to Amateur Radio Contesting, which I wrote. Um, if you're looking for contests, the WA7 BNM contest calendar has all the contests listed that are going on that week and you can look throughout the entire year. 
I also picked some contests I think are great for newbies. Stake QSO parties are a really good way, and the Stake QSO party challenge is part of that. There's also four main a VHF and UHF contests, three AWRL contests in January, June, and September, and the CQ contest in July. The N2 SL SNL list has VHF and UHF contact contest activity calendar that you can check. It's not just contests, but other VHF, microwave, other activities in those bands. There's also some weekly training. There's something called the Phone Fray. It's an HF contest. It's only one hour long. It's on Tuesday evenings. There's CW contest, the slow speed CW contest, and a Rudy's operator. These are all one hour events. There's also a local real estate contest. Look in your area and see if they're doing any VHF, UHF, simplex contests or drills. Our local Ohio Aries does these twice a year. Uh, HF NVAS contest. Again, our Aries does a drill once a year on that. It's coming up next week. Or you can create your own contest. We have something called CFARC to the field. I have the information here on how we set it up. We took all the, the metro parks in our county and the bicycle trails and things, and we set them up as points. We have a, a contest once or twice a year where we go out. These are the frequencies we use. We chose these because all technicians could use them. And we simply have exchange of what park you're in, and that's how we do it. And we have a list of all the information. If you want to build your own party, uh, your own VHF, UHF, simplex contest, all the things you need are in here to build your own. Uh, POTA, I have some resources on POTA operations. Again, a great thing to do out in the outside to set up portable, and they do have POTA on VHF and UHF. Fox hunting information and emergency communication exercises information, including Winlink Thursday and Winlink, Winlink Wednesday, which I strongly suggest if you want to get started with Winlink. So all this information is available from this link at the end of this portion of the talk. And again, this is the first in a series of sessions that we'll be doing on first steps in amateur radio emergency communications prep. And Rat Pack will be doing these. We won't run this whole part again, so we'll have this part separate so you can suggest your friends take a look at this part as we go through each of the different sessions on different topics. For more information, you can visit the Rat Pack website at www.ratpack.us. Remember, we have meetings every Wednesday and Thursday night. You can find details of upcoming meetings at presentationstiny.cc slash ratpack dash list. So again, just go to the Rat Pack site. From there, at the bottom of the page, you can see uh, a list of all of our upcoming sessions and previous sessions. You can also see how you can join us on social media, uh, join the I group's I.O. mailing list, etc. For any meeting, you can click on the Zoom tab at the top, and the Zoom link is on the page. You can click on that link to get back to uh, the Rat Pack main page and watch any of our sessions. So again, look forward to upcoming sessions on preparations for amateur radio communication. Thank you.